Welcome to everyone. I'm uh, Mike Mercer and I direct the Global Health Institute. First thing I want to do is to welcome our graduates, parents, families, friends, and faculty to our Master of Science in Global Health commencement ceremony. I know many of our parents and friends and families have come a long way. I've heard places that are really a long way. And we welcome you here in particular. It's a wonderful occasion. Uh, I personally want to congratulate all our master's students. I will now refer to them as master's graduates for the many achievements. What I'd like the graduates to do, though, I'd like you all to stand and thank your families and your friends. Please, all the graduates, let's congratulate your family. Thank you. They, they had something to do with your being here, I think. So, um, I'd like to also recognize our faculty who have joined us today. Um, there are more than 30 faculty from across Duke that are instructors and mentors uh, for our students. We couldn't have this program today uh, without their leadership and their willingness to serve as mentors and to work hand in hand alongside our students. So let me ask the faculty that are here to stand so we can recognize them. I saw most of the student, most of the graduates were clapping, so that's, that, that's a good sign. Uh, many of you know that we are a university-wide institute. Uh, we try to offer a broad array of educational programs. We have an undergraduate major and a master's program and doctoral students and postdocs and medical fellows. We'd like to think we're at the forefront of academic global health. Uh, and we've grown a great deal since we started and we feel that all of you are now our family uh, that is now almost six, I'd say six years old. And it's a great pleasure to have new members of our family with us uh, today. We do what we do because we have partners all over the world and uh, without them we couldn't advance global health. Uh, graduates, I need not tell you the field of global health is growing rapidly. You are at the forefront. Uh, I want you to believe that what you've learned here is important. I want your loved ones to believe that what you learned here is important. And most of all, we believe that what you do next is going to be really important. There's no better place than a university campus to harness the passion and creativity of young minds and the skilled, knowledgeable professors to solve the world's global health challenges. Graduates, looking out in the room here, you are the proof of that. You are the next generation of leaders in global health. And while there have been great strides made, you know we have made great strides in dealing with many of the infectious diseases, but we still have malaria, swine flu, now you all read about MERS. We have the growing, rising burden of chronic disease. It is you, our future gradu our graduates, that are going to make the breakthroughs on the remaining real challenges before us. <clears throat> There's much work to do. We are proud of what you've accomplished and know that the future is brighter for the world because you, tomorrow's global health leaders, started here at Duke. That is my message, uh, and I'd like us to move on into the program. Again, my congratulations to the graduates. Uh, wishing you all the best, and it's now my great pleasure to turn the program over to Chris Woods. Chris has been the director of graduate studies and has run our master's program since its founding. Uh, he knows more about every graduate than they realize. Uh, I am truly grateful uh, for his, your commitment, Chris, to our students, to the institute, uh, and uh, to all that you have done to help all of these wonderful graduates today uh, be the future for global health. Chris? Thank you, Mike. Welcome, everyone. Congratulations. It's a great thing. Steve, I'm glad you made it. 
Where'd you park? Fuqua. Business school stepping up and helping us out once again. Okay. So we are celebrating 25 official graduates today. I'm happy that 22 of you are here today. That means three of you have already gone off and started uh, solving the global health problems. The rest of you will have to catch up a little bit. Since our inception is one of the first global health graduate programs in the country to the recent selection of now our sixth cohort, we have embarked together on an important and fulfilling journey to reduce health disparities around the world. As Dr. Merson highlighted in his recent perspective piece in the New England Journal of Medicine, student passion and enthusiasm has been one of the major drivers towards the development of our global health programs around the world. Our graduates have rigorously prepared for that journey during that time at Duke under the guidance of our faculty. I appreciate that you have already stood. I won't ask you to stand again. Uh, this superb faculty, have, they've taught you the content and the methods necessary to engage meaningfully in the important clinical, epidemiological, and policy-driven questions that will help us guide to a more safe and healthier world. But it's you who have brought the enthusiasm and energy necessary to carry it out. It has been my privilege to see the results of that effort come to the fruition of your theses over the last two years. Oh, that's louder. Well, to successfully navigate the Duke Graduate School, who proffers our degree, and the Global Health Research Program, well, it's no simple logistic feat. And although our students are remarkably resourceful, I did want to say a word of thanks to our tremendous staff and then ask you to, to step forward and stand up if you aren't already doing so. So Sarah Martin is in the corner there. Lisa McKean, the third, in blue. And Michael Russell, who I believe is there. Thank you. I know they've made your journey uh, successful, and they've encouraged uh, a new class to join us next year, and your efforts are uh, much appreciated. I'd also like to thank Dr. Melissa Watt. If you'd stand again, Melissa. She stepped in uh, as the associate director of the program this year and her contributions and support of the students and for many cohorts to come is going to be tremendous and did a wonderful job and it's much appreciated this year. Thank you. So the focal point of our program, which all of our, our graduates know, is the research project which is performed in collaboration with one of our Duke faculty members and usually with an overseas mentor as well. This year's graduates conducted their field work in 15 different countries on a diverse array of topics, ranging from the epidemiology of dengue fever in Sri Lanka, to traumatic brain injury in Tanzania, to reducing HIV-associated risk factor uh, behaviors in Haiti. And I can say with great sincerity how universally impressed I have been with the projects that our graduates presented and submitted to the graduate school in the form of their theses and their theses defenses. Their success emanates from the efforts of our mentors, their mentors, and our local collaborators, as well as the infrastructure established for the program by our program staff, but most of all from the students' passion and commitment and willingness to ask those important questions and to pursue answers. I want to also take the moment to acknowledge the parents and loved ones who trust your, who place your trust in the program. It's no, uh, it's, we recognize that it is very difficult to have your loved ones far away from you for a substantial period of time, and uh, we do greatly appreciate the trust you put in us. So. During my remarks for each of the recent graduating classes, I have spoken about inspirational figures in my professional life. Two years ago, I spoke about former CDC Director Bill Fagey, who urged us to focus our work on something important. Last year, I spoke about Joe Mamlin, who in his tireless efforts in Elder at Kenya, uh, told me, no heroes here, just people working. 
I've been reflecting more recently on a collaborative program in Sri Lanka. It's now 10 years since the tremendous tsunami in the Indian Ocean on New Year's Eve of 2004. In the aftermath of that disaster, the Duke community gathered under our new chancellor at the time, Chancellor Zhao, who's now stepping down this year. And with his encouragement, we wanted to harness the swell of emotion and channel it to a constructive program to, that, to an affected area. It was very evident that we were not first responders, nor would we be rebuilding the physical infrastructure that was damaged in the disaster. We chose instead to leverage what we believed we do well. We engaged with another educational institution, in this case, the Rahuna Medical Faculty, which is located in Gaul, Sri Lanka. And we believed that Duke's greatest contribution would be to share our research expertise and learn from their tremendous clinical faculty. Well, at the time of our first visit to Gaul, uh, Dr. Truls Ospi and I, Truls is here, um, who now leads our Sri Lanka program, we were driving down the coast road. And I remember thinking how peaceful it was looking out into the water from that road. It was a beautiful view. Uh, and how once we arrived in the town of Gaul, where the Rahuna Medical Faculty is located, all the buildings were there and they looked relatively unscathed. Only later did I realize that the ocean view that I could appreciate was now possible because the once bustling waterfront shops and homes were gone, left leaving only the foundations of the cement foundations along the beach. And when we entered Gaul and turned right, I realized that really what we were seeing as buildings were only the facades of the building, that much of the back of those buildings was gone, leaving a Potemkin village of sorts. And so upon arrival with, in working with the Rahuna Medical Faculty, we learned of many of the tragic decisions that personnel in the local Mothers and Babies Hospital had had to make. Uh, had, they had to choose which cribs to move upstairs between the waves, leaving others behind to perish. Uh, and how after the water receded, they readied for the flood of injured people to come in, but it never came. But despite that, uh, that tragedy, we were met with a real eagerness and energy from that clinical faculty who were ready for a new start. And they wanted to develop a research capacity. And we had one very special thing going for us, and that was a tremendous administrative advocate, indeed, Palani Arianda, whose famous quote I'll give him for me was, yes, we can do that, which we heard again and again. Dean Arianda retired last year, and it gave us opportunity to relish in our successes. Our Sri Lanka program has grown from three small pilot projects to now one of DGHI's most highly regarded partnerships. We have research programs in infectious diseases and have established a re reference laboratory. We work in mental health and occupational health and adolescent health. We send trainees at all levels of the medical training, including physician's assistants. We have sent students from our graduate programs and our undergraduate global health programs and have brought their trainees here as well. And despite a very tough research funding environment, we have received funding from the National Institutes of Health, the Department of Defense, and research foundations for a number of our young investigators. It has not been easy. We suffered through the reemergence of civil war and its brutal ending, not to mention a recent dengue epidemic. And we're now faced with commercialization and inflation that's come with the return of the European vacationer. But through all of this, Dr. Ariananda remained a constant and unflappable friend. Always ready with an eager, yes, we can do that. He has graciously hosted more Duke trainees than probably any other site with the exception of Tanzania. Uh, and suffice it to say, I think we made the right decision with our investment. So working in global health can be incredibly rewarding, but it's also, the work also at times is unspeakably difficult. Sometimes the challenges seem so enormous and insurmountable. We must remind ourselves that change can happen and is happening. Seeing Dr. Ariananda and his colleagues emerge from the tumult of the tsunami and the terror of the guerrilla war reminds me, of course, why I got into the field in the first place. 
The continued inspiration from partners and colleagues in asking and answering the tough questions keeps me engaged. And as director of the Masters of Science and Global Health at the DJHI, I have the opportunity to meet with the next generation of global health leaders. And teaching you and working with you as you channel your intelligence and your energy into positive change is why I will continue the work in the future. So you are now part of a large and growing family of DGHI alumni, and we look forward to watching your next steps. Go forth in the future and be a doer. Inspire others along the way and take inspiration from others' successes. Congratulations. So before we recognize our graduates individually, which we will do, uh, I want to take a moment to recognize the 2014 Graduate Professor of the Year. The Professor of the Year Award is given to the faculty member who has the ability to generate student enthusiasm for global health and displays sincere commitment to student learning and intellectual development. As demonstrated through openness and responsiveness to intellectual inquiry beyond the classroom. We received many nominations, and one faculty member stood out. The students who nominated this faculty member described her in this way. Her steadfast commitment has stimulated interest in how health inequities manifest themselves in all societies in different ways. She has cultivated my understanding of the influence of that complex and dynamic socio-political systems have on global health. I am so grateful for all of the opportunities she has given me. Another student said she has, been an out, she has been outstanding in creating opportunities for Duke students from all levels of studies into her research projects. On numerous occasions, she went out of her way to ensure that my goals, academically and professionally, were cared for in her project plans. From her, I have experientially learned the meaning of mentorship and true service. So. Christina Mead, an associate professor of psychiatry and global health, has inspired these words from students who work with her, and we are proud to bestow this honor on her now. We ask that you come forward. To learn more about the Duke Master of Science in Global Health, visit globalhealth.duke.edu forward slash MSCGH.